Amen. Amen. Um, Father Lord, I um, just want to thank you for this um, opportunity that you are giving to us once again to share your word, to fellowship together with your word. Uh, this is your desire for us uh, to know you, to know you through your word. Father, we thank you for this uh, such a time as this, um, giving us the grace to go deeper into your word, to know you better, to know you more, and that we might know ourselves and know your plan and your will for us. Father, we are not taking every of your will, every of your plan, every of your presence. We are not taking them for granted. So we want to thank you, Heavenly Father, for those that are hearing this message, for those that are listening to this message right now. Father, I want to thank you for their lives. I want to thank you for your word that is coming to them. I thank you for the grace. I thank you for the life that is in your word. I thank you, Father, Lord, King of glory, for, for the blessing, the strength that comes through your word to your people. Father, I thank you for the grace granted to everybody right now. Listen to this message, that the blessing of the gospel, the blessing of the Holy Spirit will manifest in every aspect of the life in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for your grace granting unto me uh, to share your word. I thank you for impressing my heart and knowledge of God's will. I thank you, Spirit of Living God, for your grace upon my life, upon the organizer of, of this message. Father, we thank you, we give you the praise. We thank you in this season, Heavenly Father, again, once again, to worship you, to know you. Take all the glory, take all the honor in our lives, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. May your name be praised. Amen. Amen. Um, uh, first of all, I want to um, again thank the Lord again for this opportunity. I want to thank um, Pastor Farai for this, uh, for organizing this. I think it's such a, a wonderful thing um, to share the word because I believe so much in God distributing his will uh, in the body of Christ. Only Jesus is the, uh, is the perfect man that ever walked the, the earth. God um, has put himself um, in every man on earth, particularly the body of Christ. It's always good to hear from each other, to learn from each other, to be blessed from each other. For God has made everybody unique in his own way. And that uniqueness, uh, God wants people to share that blessing in their life with others. That's why he called us blessed for us to be a blessing unto others. The first blessing we're supposed to give to, to offer to other people is the word of God, is the knowledge of God, is the grace of God, is the mercy of God that he has, um, he has brought into our lives. It's always good to share it. And by doing so, the Bible made us understand that by testifying of God's goodness, we actually overcome everything that the adversaries of mankind throws our way. So we want to thank God. For, for the for the revelation has given to to organize of this of this message that is coming to you uh briefly i'm not going to spend too much time about 30 minutes or so i have to share uh, what um uh, holy spirit has put on my mind uh, actually last two week i was just being perfected in the last few hours that was um asked to to do this um our topic is always good to have a topic it gave us a focus it makes us to have a direction where we, where we are, anything we are doing, always good to have a direction, a purpose, a focus. So it's always good to have a topic. So I, I tie to this in knowing God's will, knowing God's will. Um, so knowing God's will is always good to know God's will for yourself, for ourselves. Uh, so no matter what God is calling us to do individually or as a family, even as a, as a church, as a body of Christ, it's always good for us to know what God wants us to do so that we not, can know what to do. Uh, there's a saying that always goes that you cannot give what you haven't got. We cannot give the blessing that we have not experienced in our life. We cannot tell people about Jesus, about God, that we have not actually experienced on one-to-one. -one. So it's always good for us to know God's will for ourselves. What is God's will? God's will uh, could be God's plan. Uh, we can say God's purpose for you as an individual, for, for your family, uh, for the church of God? What is God's counsel in, in time as days? What is God's um, God attitude and what is going on towards us, towards the body of Christ, towards you? What, what is God's plan and purpose for us as a body of Christ, whether individually or collectively? It's always good to know God's thought. Um, 
so we, let, let's take our first scripture from, from Colossians chapter 1. Uh, this is one of uh, my favorite scripture uh, that I pray a lot every, every time. And uh, my teachers in the past have always um, taught me to use the scriptures, and it's very, very beneficial. Colossians chapter 1. Uh, verse 9. If you do have your uh, Bible there, I will um, I encourage us to go into the Word of God. The more we look into the Word of God, Bible says we should continue in the law of labor. The more we look into the Word of God, the more um, we meditate, the more our, our spirit is being filled with this Word. Um, we hear you, we listen to it, we, we see it. It brings more blessing. Uh, it, it brings more blessing to us. It doesn't matter how many times we've come across this scripture before. It's always good to go into it again. Colossians chapter one, verse uh, from verse nine. And this is Apostle Paul um, letter to the to the to the church in, in Colossae. He said, "For this reason, uh, we also, uh, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you." That means Apostle Paul always pray this prayer. And if you notice the style of Apostle Paul, this is why people know most of the letters that were written by Apostle Paul. He has his style. Every writer seems to have their style of writing. Apostle Paul always repeats this thing. Not just Apostle Paul, actually. Even Apostle Peter also did the same thing. He always seems to be praying for order. He always seems to be praying for church, to be praying for individuals, as much as they're asking people to pray for them as well. More often than not, they, ask, they pray for people. And they always say they do not cease to pray. So Paul was saying here, this is a prayer that I pray every time. And if the word of God is being given to us to instruct us, as he told us in 2 Timothy 3, verse 16, that we are supposed to live according to the word of God. We are supposed to live by the word of God. That means Apostle Paul is telling us that we should be repeating the same thing as well. He said he imitated God, we should imitate him. That means if he sees not to pray this prayer. That means we too, we too should be praying this prayer every time for ourselves uh, and, and for others as well. He said, for this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, for the church, for those he is written that letter to, and to ask you that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will, the knowledge of his will. If his will, that means God, the knowledge that you may be filled. Why is that? important to Apostle, Apostle Paul and Apostle Peter and their apostles. Why have they been be filled? They've been born again. They've been filled with the Holy Spirit. Why the need again for them to be filled? That means there is a growth in Christ. That means there is a maturity that we are required to, to attain in Christ individually. That means we, Bible says we should decide the same make of the word of God so that we might grow hereby. That means we're supposed to grow in Christ, to become more and more as he has, he, he has created us to be. So that means uh, the more we pray this prayer, the more we go into the word of God, whether in our study, um, reading, meditation, even confessing the word of God, uh, Apostle Paul and, and the apostles want us to grow in knowledge of God's will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Well, that, that means a lot to us as a Christian. Like I said earlier, it's a, it's a scripture we can use to pray for ourselves, particularly in this season, particularly in this, in this time that we are in. When I say time, not just year 2020, not just in April, not just uh, this um, date, I mean this time in God's calendar. Uh, we're supposed to seek to know God's will, and it's down is the responsibility of every Christian, every born again child of God, to know God's plan in this season. So he said we should we pray for us that we may be filled with the knowledge of God's will, that we may be filled in the knowledge of God's will. And my prayer um, now is, uh, I pray this prayer again for you right now that your heart will be filled with knowledge of God's will. The Holy Spirit will bring more understanding. The Holy Spirit will flood our heart with this light that we may we may know God more. We may know God better. That we will see ourselves the way we see the way God sees us. That's how simple I can really pray that prayer. That once we see ourselves uh, the way God sees us, uh, things coming to understanding, thing coming to into perspective to us. So my prayer is uh, you will be filled with, with knowledge of God to it, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. We can make that as a confession. We can pray that for ourselves. We can pray for, for others. We can make the declaration 
and filled with a knowledge of God to will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Um, if, if, he, if, you, uh, if you go to Romans chapter 12, the um, Bible has made us to understand that there are different aspects or there are different levels of God's will. The Bible made us to understand Romans chapter 12, verse 2, again, one of our popular scriptures, that whoever that is um, close to God, um, through the scripture, you cannot close to God, be close to God without closing to his word. For we know by now, according to John chapter 1, verse 1, God and his word, they are one. If you want to know God, if you want to have a, a relationship, which you ought to uh, with God, you have to have a relationship with his word, of course, by the help of Holy Spirit. We're going to come to that uh, in a bit. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse, verse 2. Um, uh, again, a letter from Apostle Paul to the church. He said, verse 2 said, do not be, let's let just quickly read from verse 1 uh, to, to in context. He said, I beseech you, I beseech you that me, I, I kind of beg, beg of you, this is important. Therefore, brethren, that by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. He said, and, that means that's why I started from that scripture. He said, and do not be conformed to this word, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may prove what is that good, what is that acceptable, what is that perfect will of God. Let's focus on the latter part of this verse too. Um, a lot of teaching and preaching has gone on about the first part of that verse too. But let's go straight to that second part which kind of gave us indication of the different levels of the will of the Father. So that means we have the good will of God, we have the acceptable will of God, and we have the perfect will of God. Uh, during my study, I found that uh, the good will of God is, um, uh, it started from Genesis. The Bible says God, God made man, God created man in his own image in Genesis 1.26. And bef even before then, uh, when God was creating or recreating the earth, as the case may be, God always say it is good. God saw that it was good. It was good. That means God can only create what is good because He Himself is good. God is a good God. That's one of my. This one of my slogan. God is always good. So for God to be good, everything that comes from God, everything that God does or create is always going to be good. And one of the good things about God, one of the good things in God from God is the ability uh, that is given to man to have his own will. The ability has given to his creation, particularly man, to choose to love him. God will have made a robot if you want to, to follow him by force, uh, to turn into a robot. But God gave us that choice to follow him. You see that example throughout the scriptures that God always give man options. Uh, to follow him. So God is good. That means his, his will is always good. And the acceptable will of God means it's anything that we do that is well pleasing unto him. It's one that gives us the ability to please him at all times. Uh, Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 verse 13, he, he said it is God that works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Philippians chapter 2 uh, verse 13, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. So everything you do as a Christian, the Bible says, as men are led by the Spirit of God, they are the, they are the sons and daughters of the Most High God. That means everything that you do, you have to have a belief that God is one that is working in you for his good pleasure. That means we please God. It's acceptable unto God. Uh, immediately we accept Lord Jesus Christ into our life. Uh, we become well pleasing unto God. It's acceptable unto God. I'm going to come back to that a little bit again. Let's quickly go to the perfect will of the Father. And um, the perfect will of the Father is everything that God has decreed has to come to pass. We, we uh, other people, other scholars call it the creative will of the Father. Because when God decrees a thing, it has to come to pass. God created man. He made a decree within himself to brought man out of himself. That's why we are here today. And so many other scriptures, Isaiah 25, verse 10 to 11, when God decrees a thing in his word, it has to come to pass. Whether man agrees or not with it, it will come to pass. That's what we mean by the decretive will of God. That's the perfect will of the Father. Bible created us perfectly in himself. I would say wonderfully and fearfully God made us. 
You can actually add that that perfectly God created us. That's what the Bible says. It is perfect that we should be perfect as our Father in heaven is also perfect. That means the 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 the, the seed of perfection is actually not the seed to be placed unto God is actually man. That means when we do the will of the Father, when we in line with His with His will, that we know it will come to pass. Then we are walking in the perfect will of the Father. Going back to accept the will of the Father. Uh, there's so many part of the scriptures, even larger part of the scripture, that yeah, beside the decretive will of the Father, beside God making a decree, uh, which he also actually um, asked us to do, as we well, say he said in Isaiah, that decree a thing, in Job, decree a thing. That thing there is the word of God. Say, decree a word, and it shall be established. So God is passing on his own ability, his own function, his own very essence unto man the first fruit of his creation, that you too can do what I've done, that you too can make a decree about your life. And that's what we pray sometimes. Our prayer sometimes involves us decreeing the word of God, decreeing what God has said concerning us, or concerning the situation, concerning our family, our love, and our ministry. Rather than to be asking God, begging God, as some Christians do, we ought, by the help of Holy Spirit, we ought to be decreeing certain word of God to come into pass. Why do we have to? I know that teach for another day because we have to agree with God to for us to see the implementation or the effectiveness of that word in us. We have to agree with God. Remember, God gave us a free will to agree, even with his own decretive will. Whether we like it or not, that decretive will will come to pass. But God wants us to be agree with it because we are one as he is. So God made us to, he gave us the ability, the grace to make a decree about his word, concerning his word, in line with his word. He also made some, some adjustment for us to still have that choice. Remember, this good and separate and perfect will of God actually flow, they actually intertwine, they actually warn each other. For us to accept the will of God, we have to know that God is good. For us to decrease, we have to know that God is good. And God gave us a permission uh, to accept his will. That's why the acceptable will of the Father actually means instructive or perceptive will of the Father. That means God gave us instruction. He gave us the ability to accept that instruction. He also gave us the ability to choose that instruction. That means it's an instruction unto us. You choose. We see the example throughout the scripture. He told Joshua, I've given in Deuteronomy, Moses reiterated that to, to the, the people of Israel. I've given you a blessing and a cause. You choose. Joshua said, Yeah, my also, we, we, we choose to follow the Lord. So God gave us an instruction, though there are consequences, which we, which one we, 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 we do, whether we accept it or we or, or disobey or ignore God's instruction, that's always consequences. But God gave us at least the free will to choose. And God was made it clear that whatever decision we make, in fact, it will give us both sides, that if you choose it, this will happen. If you choose that, that will happen. So that God gave us a perceptive will, his permissive will um, to, to, to choose, to choose his... his, his um, his way to accept his call. And we thank God for his grace. You and I that is listening, to, um, that is now in Christ. Uh, he gave us the instruction to give our life to Christ in John chapter 3. And we thank God by the help of Holy Spirit that we he gave us the ability and the grace to accept that call. And it's the reason why you and I are now called Christian, born again child of God, because we accepted. We decide to, to accept that instruction, that perception, that precept. We decide to, to take that, that advice from God and thank God that we did. So that we, we have, like I said, quickly recap on that, we have the good will of the Father, uh, which is permissive because he allows us to choose to accept him, even though he created us up in no image. But he gave us the permission to accept him or to reject him. Adam and Eve, they rejected God. So because he gave us that, that, that will for them to choose. And whatever that we now do when we accept the instruction, that means instructive will, we is well placed and he was accepted unto God. God accepts us when we choose him. We call that the acceptable will or instructive will or perceptive will of the Father. Then we moved on to the perfect will of the Father, what God has decreed concerning us. All these types of um, levels of will, we need to know them. We need to know them for so many reasons. If we say we are from God, then we need to know who this God is. If we know that God has made us, if we know according to the scripture, God has actually 
written down our life before we leave that we need to know what God has written concerning us. Hence the reason why Jesus Christ said to the disciples, search the scriptures, find it out, study to show yourself approved, find out you individually you need to find out about God's plan. What is God's purpose for me? In, in any season, every day, what is God's plan for me today? Because he's the God that knows the end from the beginning. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 53 verse 10, God knows the end from the beginning. God knows my life before I came into sin. So if God knows it, that means he knows the plan. He knows what I need to do, how to do it, where to do it. It's now down to us to find out from the word of God. That's what we need to know God's will for ourselves. And knowing God's will is actually a, a fundamental divine right. Knowing God's will is a, is, a, is a right of every Christian to do that. Just like uh, naturally every human being on the earth have uh, human right, uh, well, that has been subjected to testing now. Most of our rights now has been taken away from us. Uh, people need to realize that. Without the fault, doesn't matter which side of the argument you have. The right of human being has been reduced right now. He might say for our own safety, that is fine. The fact is, it's been taken from us. But we need to realize that, uh, beside, more importantly than the natural human right, we have fundamental divine right that we have in Christ Jesus as a child of God. We have divine right. Let's quickly go into the scripture again. Matthew chapter 13, verse 11. Matthew 13, verse 11. Let's see what the Bible says about our divine right, about knowing God's will. Uh, Matthew 13, um, verse 11. Matthew 13, verse 11. Thank you, Lord. Um, this is about the parable. Uh, because of time, I just quickly go straight to this scripture in verse 11. Matthew, the 13th chapter, uh, 11 verse. He answered and said to them, because it has been given to you, that means to we that accepted Jesus Christ into our life, to we that have given our life or have accepted Jesus Christ to come into our life, to you, that's been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. So God gave us this right to know his will. God gave us the right to know his will. God will not ask us to do anything that is impossible for us to achieve. For God to ask us to do certain things, that means he has given us the ability, as a matter of fact, he has given us the resources. Um, oftentimes, the, actually, the answers are often in the commandment itself. The answers of the blessing are also included in the commandment itself. For God asking us to know his will, for Apostle Paul, Apostle Peter to be praying for the church to know God's will, that means it is possible for us to know God's will. That means it is God's will for us to know his plan concerning us. So Matthew 13 told us, it's given to you to know the mysteries, what is unknown to men in the world. To us, it shouldn't be a surprise to us. We should know what God is doing. Of course, not in deities. I've said that many times. No one, two, three, four, five. At least we have an idea, overall picture, what God is doing in us and through us. So it's our right, our divine right, as a child of God, as a citizen of the kingdom of God, to know God's will for us. Again, if you look again, look at that scripture again in Mark chapter 4, verse 11. Mark chapter 4, uh, verse 11. Um, I'm kind of conscious of the time. That's where I'm a little bit in a hurry. Um, but thank God that you can uh, play back this message. It's too fast for you. Mark 4 verse 11. And he said to them again, uh, remember this synoptic gospel that oftentimes is repeated throughout this uh, gospel. Some of them are actually different. said to you that has been given to know the mystery again, of the kingdom of God. That means it has been given to us. That just to reemphasize that God really wants us to know what belongs to us in Christ. What belongs to you and I in Christ is safety, is protection, is prosperity, is the peace of God, is our right to claim it, is our right to know it. You cannot benefit what you have on God, what you don't know. That's why it's good for Christians, every child of God, to know God himself, to know what belongs to you in Christ Jesus. 
after Apostle Paul told us that, he said, all things belong to you. You need to know what are in those things. You need to find out what is it that belongs to me. Why do I have to give my life to Christ? What's the benefit for me to give my life to Christ? That God says, if you search, you find out. The peace, my peace, my protection, my prosperity is all yours in Christ Jesus. Knowing my thought towards you, knowing my plan towards you, knowing my plan, my counsel in that situation is your right to know it. So Bible made us to understand that it is given to you to know it. That means it's in your spirit where the word of God dwells. It is in your spirit where God lives. It's not down to you to draw it out through your study, through your diligent study of the God's word to know his will. So nothing should happen to you by accident. Nothing should, nothing should happen by, to a Christian by accident. Nothing should really, really surprise us if we really, really walk with God because he wants us to. In fact, he has deposited in our spirit but we need to draw it out from our spirit being into our mind and from there into every aspect of our life. When it comes to health, into our body, when it comes to our finances, into our finances, prosperity, when it comes to peace, into our home, to our job, we have to draw it out from our inner man. The Bible says with joy, you draw from the well of salvation. This salvation is in our heart. The Bible says we believe unto righteousness. We confess unto salvation. That belief is not is not. We believe with our spirit. We believe with our spirit. That means we, we draw everything that about God for us. We draw it out through our study. Of course, we therefore Holy Spirit. We bring it out from within, from our spirit being, into that part of our life that we need it. Remember, man is a spirit. Man has a soul. Man lives in the body. The soul comprises of the will, the mind, and the emotions. We need to do that. That's very, very important for us to know. When man got born again, your spirit will be created unto God. Your spirit is one that is connected unto God. But you're studying, your script, you're studying the scriptures, you're confessing your prayer, is what now needs to renew your mind. Apostle Paul said in that scripture we read earlier in Romans chapter 12, we need to renew our mind to change the way we think so that we can become more and more who God is in our spirit, so that God in every amplification, God will have his influence in every part of our being. So it's our divine right to know the will of the Father. Again, if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10, say, but God has revealed them to us. If you look at the preceding uh, scripture verse in verse 9, say, but it is written, I has not seen nor heard nor have entered to the heart of men the things which God has prepared for those who love him. See, for those who love him. If you love God, you accept Jesus Christ. If you love Jesus Christ, you accept, you do it in his word. He said, if you love me, abide in my words. A lot of Christians profess that they, they, they are Christian. They are far from being a Christian. It's difficult to be a Christian without diligently studying and dwell in the word of God. That's why it's a man shall not live by bread alone, but every word. That means day by day, every opportunity that we have, we fix our eyes on the word. We can't play, we listen to it. Does that mean we can't do anything else? Yes, we can. Even in the midst of all that things we do, let your mind still be on God's word. Amen. So your eyes have not seen nor heard nor have entered to the heart of men the things which God has prepared for those who love him. So God has prepared certain things for you. And before you came into sin, he has given them into your spirit. He has revealed them. According to this verse 10, now 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10, I said, God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit touches all things, yet the deep things of God. And another important point, for any Christian to say they're a Christian, they must have the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You, it's difficult. It's impossible to fellowship with God to work without the help of Holy Spirit. It's going to be just ordinary book to you. What brings understanding? What brings the impact of God to work? The Bible says it's powerful. It's alive. It's active. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. What brings that quality into our life is the person and the ministry of the Holy Ghost. So for you to be a Christian, he always emphasizes in my teaching. Don't assume that you're a Christian because you are going to a Christian home. 
you have to have a personal relationship with yourself. How do you start that? By giving your life to Christ. Don't make that assumption that because you're born again. Make sure you follow Romans chapter 10, verse 8, 9, 10, to be born again. And Jesus Christ instructed us in John chapter 3 to be born again. Then after that, go back to Luke chapter 11, verse 13 as well. And ask him, ask God to give you his spirit. Because without the Holy Spirit, it's impossible to give your life to Christ in the first place. He helped you to accept Jesus Christ. But you need the fullness of Holy Spirit to walk this Christian life. And this is why we need to ask him to receive the fullness of Holy Ghost. So being born again is a different thing. Receiving the full baptism of Holy Spirit is a different thing. So Christians really need to know this. But without the ministry of Holy Ghost, it is impossible to live a Christian life. And devil now going to have his will, deceiving even so-called Christian. So say, the, one of the ministry, one of the work of Holy Spirit in our life is to reveal to us. But God has revealed his plan. God has revealed his purpose for you. In times such as this, God has revealed what man doesn't know about you. He has revealed them through his spirit, in your spirit, where Holy Ghost dwells. So it's not impossible for you to know God's will. It's not impossible. It doesn't matter what age, where you are, in any part of the world, once you have the word and Holy Spirit, you know the will of the Father. Praise God. So that means you ought to know with the help of Holy Ghost, with the help of God's word, to know God's will. So in times such as these, what is the role of the church? When I mean church, of course, you know, church is not the building. Church is the body of Christ. Church is those who that need to gather together. Church is those that are called by God. Remember what Jesus Christ said? He said, he didn't choose me. I choose you. He chose us by the help of God Almighty. He told us in John 6, verse 63, or 65, he said, in 65, John 6, 65, he said, no one can come to me except my father draws them to me. That's why I say God knows us before we, we, we are born, even before we are formed inside our mother's womb. That means the role of you, because God called you to be a Christian. That's why one of the reasons why you are most worship him, thank him every day for translated you and I out of darkness into his marvelous light. That alone, you can spend a minute in that, giving praise to God. Because it will take eternity for us to know the benefit, what it means to be out, in, out of darkness into his light. So what is the role of the church in this, in this season, in this crisis? What is the role of the church? What is your role? What is my role as the body of Christ, as the called of God? Because don't take it lightly that we are being in a lockdown now. Church cannot gather together. That is against God's will. What church means, means we have to actually assemble together. You have to see things from the eyes of the spirit. If you're a spirit-led child of God, you have to see things that happen in the physical. You have to see from the spirit being. Because everything that happens in the physical is controlled by what happens in the spirit. From the beginning, this thing started. I know it's not ordinary. I know that this thing is significant. So I've been searching the scripture, been reading, been studying. What is God's plan for the church? What's God's plan in this season? What's going on in this season? So what is your role and I in this season? We need to know what God's will is. We need to know what God has decreed that his son, our Lord Jesus Christ, is going to come back. We need to know, is it the time? I always say to people, everything that's happened in the world is gravitated towards the end. We all know that. It's not, it's not a strain to every Christian. Every Christian knows that this whole world is gravitated towards the end, gravitated towards Jesus Christ coming back. God has decreed it to happen. But it has to be in his time. That's what most of our prayer now is. It has to be in his time. If it's not God's time, for the, for the lawless man to reveal himself, it's not his time. So we have the the right, the decreed will of God to decree that it's not your time. This is still church age. Why is it church age? Because we still need to bring many more, millions more into the kingdom of God. So we can slow down the consequences of the sin of man. Yes, we can. Bible told us in John chapter 20 that whoever that sin that you forgive, the sins will be forgiven. That means church has a power to delay the coming 
or to delay the manifestation of the lawless man. That means church has a role to play. Church needs to know the will of the Father in this season. That's why we need to study scripture. It doesn't matter what you've heard. All over the social media, do your own study. Let Holy Spirit speak to you personally. Let Holy Spirit talk to you what you need to do, what I need to do as a person, what we now we need to do as a church in seasons such as this, in crisis like this. Remember, everything that happens, there are also always two sides. There's no fence. It's always you're good, you're for God. Or you're not good, you're for the adversary, you're for the devil. It's, it's as simple as that. That's why it's dangerous for some Christians to think they can live their life the way they want. No, you cannot. If you choose to accept Jesus Christ, you have to live in line with his instruction. If not, you are gravitating towards, excuse me, towards the other side. So in this season, when things happen, it's always for good or for evil. Men, Christians need to know that. Why is this thing happening? And everything that happens that is bad, remember, the adversaries is targeting mankind generally, but especially Christian. So anything that stops Christian from gathering together, from perverting the creative will of the Father for Christian to come together, that it calls your attention, my attention, to do something about it. We shouldn't take lightly because of the virus, we have been locked down in the home. No, it's go beyond that. Yes, we can still meet online through social media, but it's not the same thing to gather together, to assemble together. That is the decretive word of God. That's what is called church. Church has to assemble together. So the devil knows the impact when we come together. This is locking down. Forget the impact, spreading of disease, yes. But the main reason spiritually is for Christians not to come together. Yes, let's make, let's call it what it is. Yet it's happened before. But this one is completely different. Everybody knows that. So Christians need to wake up and pray the will of the Father. But you need to know that will before you can pray it. You need to stop the manifestation of the lawless one yet. Until we are rapture, he's not allowed to show himself. We are the one that is restraining him. And for church not to be able to come together to fellowship together all over the world, it's a concerning. And every Christian needs to be concerned about that. It's sad in my heart song when they lock the place we use for church in, when I'm preaching for you from Bedford yet. Yeah. It's something that I know, no. That's when it hit me more that, okay, this thing is more than what we think it is. You have to see things from the Spirit. Brethren, don't let us take things lightly. We are man of God. We are children of the Most High God. We are God kind people. We see things from the Spirit realm. By the help of Holy Ghost and through the word of God. So our role, my role, and your role in this time is to pray the will of the Father for men to still be saved. To decree that the devil cannot show for his face right now until we are gone. He has no right to manipulate, to take the free will of man that God cherished so much that he gave to man. That's what is happening now. The will of man is being taken away. Men cannot freely make choices now. Christians need to see it that way. It's concerning. So we have to pray that, Father, your will has to be done. Your will is for us to continue to spread in the gospel to reach the end of age before Christ comes back, before he calls us. So it is important for you and I to obey God, to obey his word. His word for us to know his will, to know his will for a reason. Because the blessed in obedience always come to us and always save others as well. When we heed to God's instruction to know his will, we are saving lives literally. When you pray in the corner of your room, you are saving lives literally. When lives are going to hell and it's sucking the heart of Jesus Christ, that he left us that mandate to save as many as possible. But suppose I have become many things so that I can win some. We ought to do the same thing, even in the corner of our rooms right now, praying for the salvation of man. One of my prayers is for God, those people that you not speak to, manifest yourself to them. Let them know that you're the only one that can save. Let me come back from that coma, seeing you in their dreams, giving testimony that Lord Jesus is the Lord. So it's very important for you to know God's will, because lives of men are at stake. Of course, we need the help of Holy Spirit. We need the powerful spirit to be able to do so.
to give your life to Christ is by the help of Holy Spirit. To remain, to know God's word is by the help of Holy Spirit. In fact, Jesus Christ went to the cross. We're celebrating resurrection. Jesus Christ went to the cross by the help of Holy Spirit. He was able to sacrifice himself on the cross by the help of Holy Spirit. That's why we need the ministry of Holy Spirit. So when we pray in the Spirit, he reveals things to you, you, what you need to do particularly, or what you need to join to as a body of Christ to do certain prayer. I'm so glad that every church is now coming together, doing all types of prayer. Yes, that's what we should be doing even before this crisis. It's a call for us as well. That's what we all continue to be doing even after this crisis. We ought to continue coming together. It can't be the same again as a Christian. You can't just live our life for ourselves anymore. God's will for you to live for him. If you give you the free will to accept him, they have to live for him. God's will for you, God's plan for you and I is to live for him, is to be uh, an impactful member of his body. Is basically to save life. So because why? Because we're going to be accountable to God. You and I are going to be accountable to God. Romans chapter 4, verse 12. Let's go in there. I think I have about five few more minutes. Romans chapter 4, verse 12. Let's go in there. Romans chapter 4, uh, verse 12. Romans chapter 4. Um, Romans chapter 4. Romans. Let's go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew. Come back to Romans later on if you time still permit us. Let's go to Matthew 12. Matthew 12, 36. Matthew 12, 36. You can also go to uh, Matthew 16, 27. Let's go to Matthew 12, 36. But I say to you that for every idle word men speak, he will give account of it in the day of judgment. That means everything we do, everything we do, if you go check other scriptures, Matthew 16, 27, Hebrew 4, verse 13, even 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 5, also the same thing. Everything we do, we give account. Everything you do is if you do, I don't, oh, there's no excuse, oh, it's my pastor, the pastor didn't lead me, the prophet didn't tell me, no. It's going to be you and I giving an account to do God's will. To do God's will, we have to know his will. Because we're going to be accountable to God. One of the reasons why we need to know God's will. Remember, in seasons such as this, make sure your thought is in line with God's will. That your thought affect things around you. Your thought of panicking, your thought of fear affect you yourself. It affect things around you, even things including women and human being around you. So make sure you have your thought of peace. Make sure you have your thought that God knows what is going on. The Bible says you work things together for your good. Let your heart be at peace. Fear not. God has repeated it throughout the scripture for us of fear not. But the reason being, when you entertain fear, it weakens you. You've heard it so many times before, and it's actually very true. It weakens you. It makes you vulnerable for things that's not supposed to come to you land in your body so make sure you you are very careful of the thought you and i are having yeah we do listen to this we need to be thinking god your will be done life will be saved men will be getting out of the that sick hospital bed remember this season they're supposed to be doing um festival of life in london yesterday now they've turned that place to a to a, to an hospital and christians are not bothered they are doing that all over the country. Yeah, they need to save life. But guess what? It shouldn't come to that. So our prayer is, Father, we don't want any more people to die. So we don't need that place. That place is supposed to be used for Christians to gather together, have an impact in this world. Now we can have that. Now they're using it for hospital. And Christians, we are sitting at home. It doesn't touch you. You are saving your home. 
Our job is to save others. Our call is to pray for salvation that men don't end up in hell. As men that God has put in our care to do, we ought to do it. And it starts with prayer. It starts with heartfelt prayer that God used this crisis to further the gospel, to shine your light into the heart of man. Remember, God has no obligation until we invite him. He has given the earth to the children of men. We need God now. And God needs us to call upon him. So let you and I continue to call upon him to be filled with his will for you, for the church, what we need to do, how we need to do it. Remember, Bible told us James chapter 4, verse 17. So therefore to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him, to that person, it is sin. You know the right thing to do. You and I know the right thing to do. Let us do it. We know it's our will to pray. Let's pray. We know it's our will to seek the face of the Father. Let's do so. We know it's our will to study the scriptures, to love God more, to love others more. Let's do it. It's a good thing to do it. So let's do it. So my prayer today is that by the help of Holy Ghost, by the saving grace of Lord Jesus Christ, by his blood that is shed for us, will we continue to do his will, that his will will be done concerning you, concerning me, concerning our family, our loved one, and the church of God, that the will of the Father will be established in the name of Jesus. I pray for God will continue to strengthen in this time, that we all continue to be doing the right thing in line with the word of God by the help of Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for this time. I thank you, Father, for your word has come to us. You are the one that impacts faith. Heavenly Father, as this word come to our heart. I thank you for the faith, for with it, uh, we please you. Thank you for our faith has increased, Heavenly Father, with this little word that we have received today, encouragement and strengthening to do your word. Father, I thank you for empowering your people, for empowering us, Father, Lord, in these last days, to carry out your purpose, your purpose, Father, your desire is to save men. Father, we make ourselves available unto you even more now than ever to ready, Heavenly Father, to speak for your word of healing, to speak for the word of salvation to our life and to all the nations of the world. Father, we are ready to do your will. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for the enlightenment. Thank you for the revelation. Thank you for your power that is working us mightily. Blessed be your name in the name of Jesus. Thank you for listening. We are blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen.